do you really need the higher time frame? It's a question that crosses every trader's mind at some point, and the answer might just surprise you. By the end of the video, you'll know why, but first we need to know how to use the higher time frame. So the higher time frame is used for several things, but one of the best things to use the higher time frame for is bias. And bias is where we think the market is going to go. So if the bias is bullish, we think price is going to go higher, and vice versa. But how do we find the bias? Well, there's two ways. The first way is where we look at the daily chart, and for each day we have to look at the previous day, because we can find something called previous day high or low. And the market almost always reaches the previous day high or low, but how do we know which one price is going to reach? Well, there's some key rules which are really easy to understand. First, we have to see if the previous day closed above or beneath previous day high or low. And if price closed above previous day's high, then previous day's high is going to be the high that price targets for the next day. And same if price closes beneath the previous day's low. But what if price doesn't close above or below previous day's high or low? In that case, we have to see which direction price have been. For example, let's say that price had reached the previous day's high, but didn't close above it. Then we would anticipate previous day's low to become the next target for the next day. And same with previous day's low. Now, if price doesn't even reach previous day's high or previous day's low, then it will be a consolidation candle. And in that case, we will want to either look at previous previous day's high and low to see what the bias is. And if we are moving higher, always closing above previous day's high, then previous day's high would become the target for the next day. Now, a chart example will look something like this. So remember when I told you guys that if price fails to close beneath previous day's low, then previous day's high is going to become the drawn liquidity for the next following day. And that happened right here. We can see price reaches all the way beneath previous day's low, but closes above it. And that means previous day's high is a drawn liquidity for the next day. Price closes above the previous day's high, which means previous day's high is going to become the drawn liquidity for the next day. We can see price closes above previous day's high again, and again and again. But right here we can see the price fails to close above the previous day's high. And we can see that is right on the edge. So in this case, previous day's low will become the drawn liquidity, right? But we can see price was pretty bullish. So instead of reaching all the way beneath previous day's low, price just closed above the previous day's high, which we could see as an exception. But if we were to look at further price action, we could actually see that price in this case failed to close above previous day's high right here and closed beneath previous day's low. And we know that means previous day's low is going to become the drawn liquidity for the next following day. Price fails to close beneath previous day's low. So now previous day's high is drawn liquidity for the next following day. Price fails to close above the previous day's high. Previous day's low is the drawn liquidity for the next following day. And here we can see price fails to close beneath previous day's low, so previous day's high should become the drawn liquidity, right? But in this case, we can see price failed to reach previous day's high and just made it close beneath previous day's low, also creating a market structure shift, as we can see right here, at this candle close. And right here, price makes a close beneath previous day's low, so previous day's low should become the drawn liquidity for the next following day. We can see price closes beneath previous day's low, but here we can also see that we have swept sell side liquidity and we have reached a significant fair value gap. So in that case, we could see that previous day's high will become the drawn liquidity. And we can indeed see price makes a close above previous day's high. So then previous day's high is the drawn liquidity for the next day. And we can just see this continue over and over and over again. But if you really want to have an almost perfect bias that works 90% of the time, you need to use this second way. So we start off by looking at two swing highs, which we want to see being very close at each other. And this can also be previous day's highs. When we have that, it creates equal highs. And these equal highs on the daily time frame is a significant draw on liquidity. Because the highs in themselves are a draw on liquidity, as we just discussed before. So when we combine that with another draw on liquidity, price really wants to go there. And when we have such a significant draw on liquidity, it's going to be easy for us to anticipate where price should go. And if we also use previous days high and previous days low, as we just talked about before, it gives us a high chance of our bias being correct. A chart example will look something like this. So we can see that price have created equal lows, and that we also just closed above previous day's high. So where should the drawn liquidity be? 
it should be previous days high. But we do have to keep in mind that we have equal those down here. And we can see right here, price fails to close above previous days high. So where should the draw on liquidity become? It should be previous days low. We can see price makes a close beneath previous days low. So the draw on liquidity is going to become previous days low again. And we can also see that lines up with this low down here. So we have three reasons to see why price should reach the equal lows. And we can see that price reached all the way down, closing beneath previous day's low, this low, and the equal lows. Now, how can we use the higher time frame when we are trading on the lower time frame? Well, think about when you are running and you have a map. Then the map is, of course, going to tell you where you should go. That's the same with the higher time frame when you're trading on the lower time frame. As the higher time frame is your map telling you which direction you should trade. Also, another thing which we can use the higher time frame for is looking for potential reversal areas which we cannot see on the lower time frame. So let's say that price is trading higher and on the higher time frame we reached up into a premium fair body gap, but on the lower time frame we cannot see that. So we're just taking bullish trade entries because we think the bias is bullish, but it really is bearish. And that could save us time and money. This is a perfect example of where the higher time frame is going to tell us on the lower time frame which direction the market should go. So we can see that price traded within a discount of this large digging range, or more specifically, the OTE. And within this OTE, there lies a fair value gap. And if we mark out that fair value gap with a Fibonacci tool from the low all the way up to the high, we can see that price just made a small mohawk through that lower quadrant. And if we are trading on the lower time frame, we might just think that price is bearish. But on the high time frame, we know that price have reached down in this discount, and more specifically the OTE, reaching a algorithmic signature within this Fibonacci gap. So if we're on the lower time frame, we might just still be bearish, taking this Fibonacci gap entry, for example, and then losing, of course. But if we're bullish and have seen that higher time frame, we might just take it as an inversion for value gap, and that will save us a lot of money. But do you know which higher time frame you should use? Well, there's mainly the daily, four hour, and one hour time frame, and these time frames matches with the one minute, five minute, and fifteen minute time frames, which is the main time frames that we consider lower time frames. And the lower you go, the lower higher time frame you should have. For example, you start with the 15 minute time frame, which matches with the daily time frame. And if you trade on the 5 minute time frame, you should mainly use the 4 hour and 1 hour time frame. And if you are all the way down on the 1 minute time frame, I would recommend using the 4 hour time frame to your 1 hour bias, and then 1 hour bias to your 1 minute bias. Another commonly asked question is, can you use the 15 minute time frame for your bias if you're trading on the 1 minute and 5 minute time frame? Yes. Because the higher time frame might not have as much influence on your lower time frame trading as the 15 minute time frame. But the downside of only using the 15 minute time frame is that we can't really see the higher time frame PDRAs and bias. But how do we find the 15 minute bias? Well, I like to use PDRAs, and the way we can do that is by looking at where price is delivering from, and also looking at the draw on liquidity. So if price is delivering from a fair value gap and there's equal highs, then we'll be bullish on the one minute and five minute time frame. A chart example will look something like this. So to really identify the bias on the 15 minute time frame, we first have to see if price is moving higher or lower. And in this case, we can see that price is moving higher, running out highs with a fair value gap. So if we look over here, we can see that price created a fair value gap and price moved down into this fair value gap on the 15 minute time frame. And on the one minute time frame, we can see that this looks to be pretty bearish if we look from this candle and to the left we could see price moving lower right but the 15 minute time frame is telling us that the bias is bullish after this bullish for the gap delivery now we also have to identify a drawn liquidity which we can do on the one minute time frame where we have several highs including equal highs so that's how we can use the 15 minute time frame to find a strong bias to use on the one minute time frame so should you use the higher time frame to your lower time frame trading? Well, yes and no. Because as I said, the higher time frame is of course a good tool to use, but you can also just stick to the 15 to 5 minute time frame if you're trading on the 1 minute time frame to not overcomplicate things. But it is really up to you and what you think is the best and most reliable time frame to figure out the bias, drawing liquidity, etc.
Thank you so much guys for watching, but you can't really use the higher time frame on the lower time frame if you don't have a strategy on the lower time frame. Well, you can watch my video about how to build your own strategy right here.